Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the High Inland and Sanctified. I hope you feel the joy and excitement for this new year rather than the dread of this new year. A sweet quote I love from Henry Nowen goes this way. I hear at my center words that say, I have called you by name from the very beginning. You are mine and I am yours. You are my beloved. On you my favor rests. I have molded you in the dust of the earth and knitted you together in your mother's womb. We hope you feel that kind of love and acceptance uh, this morning. And if you are visiting with us, if you would fill out this information in the back of your bulletin, that can be your offering today. Again, welcome to St. Matthias and Church of the Highlands. I ask that you please stand as we cross the processes and follow the procession of the cross. We all sing together in number 623, charge to the I have. Well, we are looking forward to a new year and God's blessings, and uh, we're going to 
Okay, please join me. We'd like to stand up to celebrate, celebrate the inherent worth and dignity of every person and to share that love which is ultimately God, even our greatest reason, that love which unites us. And we will begin our service with the Word of God. And on the front of your bulletin or on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, that's the blue book with the cross. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, First reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 6, 22 through 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. The Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning and happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. You'll turn in your book of common prayer to page 592. We're going to Read Psalm 8. And we'll do this in full verse. Uh, and so I will begin with the first verse. And think about these words as you say them. O Lord, our governor, 
How exalted is your name in all the world. You have set up a stronghold against your adversary to quell the enemy and the avenger. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. You give him mastery over the works of your hands, and you put all things under his feet. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord. Second, the second reading from Galatians, Paul explains himself. And when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is Joel Lincoln's conscience. We don't have the word in the order of service of the hymn, because there are only three words. And uh, uh, Joel Lincoln's Donum is from where you get the word donate. No BC is where we get the word nobility. And Pachin uh, sounds like peace. So it means give us Lord peace. Let's stand and sing it together. And some of you may know this round is coming here if you want to. <laughs>
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they heard and had seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. How many of you have already taken down your Christmas tree? One, two? We're not going to call you all Scrooges, but... Uh, for bridges, yes? It was covering up the fish tank. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I think the world can be divided into two, right? The people who take their Christmas tree down right after Christmas, and those who wait until maybe after Epiphany, I don't know, after Mardi Gras, <laughs> after <laughs> Easter, or some people just leave them up all year around. Mardi Gras. Yeah. Others uh, who like to leave their Christmas lights up on their house or somewhere else uh, throughout the year. Um, also, uh, people respond uh, after Christmas Day by taking all their gifts that they didn't like uh, to return them, or maybe they re-gift them. I mean, think about that for a moment. Chances, chances are, uh, one of the gifts that you God was probably uh, given to you by someone who had been given that gift, <laughs> and they wanted to re-gift it uh, to you. So it's kind of like the uh, fruitcake that just, there's only one fruitcake, and it just keeps <laughs> making the rounds. Um, some people like to go buy up all the Christmas stuff. Are you one of those people? Like, I mean, as soon as you get a chance after Christmas Day, you go. And everything is on sale. We're trying to get rid of all this Christmas stuff. And you buy it up and you put it in a closet. And then you forget where it is, right? God bless you. Uh, so uh, on this particular uh, day, we recognize there are different ways for us to respond to uh, Christmas, right? Different ways that we respond to birth of Christ into the world, we have different reactions and different responses. Some of us respond in one way and some in another. As we heard from our gospel text this morning, in fact, from all of our texts this morning, there are various responses that we have to this Christ child, to this Messiah that is being born into the world. And so I want us to, to look at how it is that, uh, especially in, in Luke's gospel, how those that were there in those days responded. If you look back at the text, it begins with the shepherds. And you're thinking, we just talked about that last weekend. I mean, Christmas Eve. And this, Christmas is already over. Aren't we moving on to something else? Well, as we hear in our text this morning, there, there is more to the story, and it continues. And Luke continues to tell the story. And uh, we would do well to spend a little bit more time with this Christmas story, wouldn't we? Because there's so much that's there. Christmas is so busy. Christmas Day is so busy. And our thoughts and, and minds are on so many other things. But as we look here, we see is taking place. We see that the shepherds, uh, they, they're just out there minding their own shepherd business, right? They're out taking care, uh, and if you've ever been around sheep or a shepherd, uh, there is a lot of watchfulness, uh, wanting to make sure a coyote, a wolf, 
doesn't come in. I don't know, did they have coyotes in, in, in that area? They did have mountain lions. Mountain lions, or um, they, they had wolves and, and all that. So a shepherd would be looking out to make sure this wasn't going to take place, that they were defending and keeping watch over their flocks, especially by night. And so they're out there doing all of this. The angel appears, and, and uh, they hear this news about this child that is to be born. And so they go, and Luke gives us a lot of verbs here in these just short amount of verses this morning. So the shepherds went, and then they saw, and then they told other people, right? They started telling about what it is that they had just seen. And then, another verb, they glorified God. And, and all of, of those around them are glorifying God. And then they returned. They went back and they began to tell this story over and over again. And so we hear all of what uh, their response is, but also the people that are there as well. If you look back at the, the gospel text, uh, it, it tells us that uh, when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. So the, the people were excited. The people were amazed. It was this wonderful thing that had happened, something that only God could do. And of course, they were glorifying God because of that. But we also see someone else in the story, uh, Mary. And Mary is also responding to what is taking place in her life. If you look back here, it says, But Mary treasured all these words. She treasured them. She clung to these words. She just thought, these words are so wonderful and powerful. And uh, we see that uh, she pondered them in her heart. So building up to this, throughout those nine months, she is doing a lot of thinking. She's doing a lot of praying. She is uh, listening and, and treasuring what is going on inside of her. And of course, when this day comes for the child to be born, she responds in wonderful ways. Well, Luke kind of shortens it down for us. He gets us to after eight days had passed. And it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus. So she is participating in all of this as well. She knows what it is that she needs to do with the child as a part of her religion. She is going to take the child to, she and Joseph, to be circumcised and in this naming of Jesus. So she responds with this kind of activity. And there are amazing things that are taking place right there. We all have our different responses to the birth of Christ as well. But, uh, I was watching, I think uh, this was yesterday, Jimmy and I were watching uh, the, the news, I think it was the Today Show, and they were showing different videos and things as they do, some that are funny and some that um, uh, make you cry, or uh, don't make me cry, but I think Jimmy cries when she sees it. But this particular one was a family. They were having their photo uh, made it was just a big family and uh, someone is videoing all of this and they're getting ready to, to take the picture and they start to do the count right? <laughs> so they say on the count uh, of one uh, smile and you know we're going to snap the picture and so they they start to count down three two one and you hear this woman say I'm pregnant <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you see the, the expressions on their faces, right? The, the grandfather and the father, especially the father, he was kind of fun to watch. Uh, the mother and the siblings, all of them gathered around. And you see the responses that they have to getting this news. First of all, they're shocked. Some are like, what? What did she say? Uh, and the father, you see his eyes get really big. They all respond in different ways to what they have heard. This child to be born. Well, in the same way, we have different responses to the birth of Christ. Not only to the announcement that Jesus was going to come into the world, but uh, to the reality and the realization of Christ coming into the world. 
I wondered this morning, what had you heard and seen about this child Christ? And how have you responded to what you have heard and seen? Well, some of the things that we've heard and seen, going all the way back, we still have our Advent uh, wreath over here. We are no longer in Advent. We have uh, the reminders there of the buildup to the birth of Christ. When we lit the uh, Christ candle that is there in the middle, we began to hear these words about a longing for someone to save us from the darkness. Remember, we lit the first candle, the candle of hope, and that was the light that was beginning to shine in the darkness of the world. And so we have heard that. And we have felt that too, haven't we? The longing for someone to come and to save us from our sins, from the evil of this world, from the darkness that is all around us. Also, we've heard and seen the fulfillment of God's promise uh, to us, to save us for the Messiah. So it's not only the longing, but it's the fulfillment where God breaks into time, breaks into our dirty world, and brings forth the good news of Jesus Christ. We've also heard and seen the incarnation of God in human flesh. That's a pretty wild thought, isn't it? We sing these songs about it, we talk about it. But, I mean, think about how significant that is. That God, the creator of all things, the sustainer of all things, the provider of all things, came into our world in human flesh, born in a manger, in the dirtiness of a barn, in the vulnerability of being a human. That's pretty amazing. But also this light that is shining in the darkness. We have seen it. We've heard about it. And the question is, how have you responded to all of this? I mean, did you let yourself get still and quiet enough in this past week to really think about the significance of Christ coming into the world as he did? I mean, was there a moment in the midst of the food that you were preparing or the food that you were eating or the presents that you were opening or uh, all the things that you typically do in your traditions of Christmas? Was there a moment when you really got still and began to contemplate what this was all about? And also, how will you respond as you enter into a new year? For some people, it will be a commitment to walk with Jesus as a disciple more closely than you ever have before. I mean, that's a good thing. Today is the first day of the year, so today is a good time to make that commitment to say, I am going to do it. I'm going to be a stronger disciple. There were points in this past year where I, I really began to walk off the path that Jesus had for me, and I began to go in my own direction and do things that I really shouldn't have been doing. But this year, I'm going to begin, starting with today, to commit my life to Christ anew and to walk more closely with Him, wherever it is that He leads me. Maybe it's making goals for your spiritual life in this next year. Maybe it is the goal of being more faithful with prayer. To say, I'm going to follow the daily office. I'm going to pray a morning prayer. I'm going to pray at noonday. Maybe just for a short amount of time, I'm going to, uh, and you can also uh, use the app that we've talked about uh, for the uh, Book of Common Prayer. Uh, and, and you can get a Book of Common Prayer. Probably shouldn't take one from here. But uh, I don't know. We might be able to make you a deal. <laughs> But to, uh, to get one of those and pray the morning uh, prayers, the noonday prayers, pray the evening prayer, or the complete prayer before you go to bed at night. Or maybe just while you're driving down the street, going to work or going wherever it is that you go, to pray. Turn the radio off and pray. Use that time as a time of prayer to commit yourself to that anew. Maybe it's a resolution to read scripture each day. 
when you started out last year at this time, you said, I'm going to read the whole Bible in a year. How did that go? <laughs> Things happen, right? We get distracted and we get off course. And by the way, you don't have to read the whole Bible through in a year. Maybe just set aside that you're, you're going to read uh, some of the Gospels every morning. Uh, or you're going to read Proverbs. You're going to just go month by month and you're going to read uh, a chapter every, every day of the month. Maybe it is picking up that book of common prayer again because it already is designed for you to be able to, to read through the scripture uh, and to do so in a systematic way throughout the year. Maybe it's a commitment to go out into the darkness with your light to recognize there is indeed a lot of darkness in our world, in our neighborhood, in our city, all around us. And maybe instead of complaining about how bad it is, to ask yourself, what can I do to make a difference? What can I do to make this neighborhood better? What can I do to make this city better? And there certainly is something that you, little old you, can do to make this world a better place. If all of us would make that commitment, how great it would be in our world, right? If we would all take the light of Christ and take it from this room and go out into the neighborhood and out into our communities, our families, our schools, our relationships, and say, I'm going to let this light shine. I'm going to reflect the light of Christ in my world. One of the best ways we do that here as a church is through our missional ministry. And so how about we all re-up to serve on at least one missional ministry team. Maybe it's to help with the meals on Thursday nights. Maybe it is to help with one of the clothing, clothing closets or basic necessities. Uh, maybe it's to help the teen club. Uh, and to ask Dewana right back there, how can I help in this next year? I'm going to really help uh, kids who are in the difficult years of their, their uh, adolescence to, uh, to stay on track with school and the things that they need to be doing. There's just all kinds of ways that we can serve and shine our light. But I would also ask, how is it that our church can respond in this next year? And I should say church is. Church for the Highlands and St. Matthias. How can we respond to Christmas in this next year, to the birth of Christ? Well, here are some ideas. Maybe to commit ourselves anew in our devotion as, as churches to Jesus. Because we can get easily into the game of being a church, right? Or into the ruts and saying, well, we do church every Sunday. I'm going to show up at church uh, on Sunday, and I'm going to stay there an hour, and then I'm going to leave. And then I'll come back the next week. And, and we just kind of get into this routine. But how is it that we can do more than that? How can we really make a difference? I know for Church of the Highlands, when we were founded, when we started, we said, we want to be the kind of church that if it ever disappears, the neighborhood would notice that they would go, wow, where, where is Church of the Highlands? Instead of, oh, I didn't know they closed. I didn't know they disappeared. No, we want to make that kind of difference. And to be churches that fully respond to the Holy Spirit, that we would say, God, I know your spirit is real. And by the way, I talked to uh, Odessa, and she didn't tell me she was in the hospital. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to have words later. Uh, but I was talking to her um, this past week and about this past uh, Sunday when we didn't have water. And uh, she was telling me that she put water in her bathtub. And uh, she said, uh, the Holy Spirit was telling me uh, to put water in my tub to be ready. And sure enough, there was a water problem. She was listening to the Spirit. And we need to listen to the Holy Spirit as a church to say, Holy Spirit, where will you lead us in this next week? Where will you guide us into this next year? What is it that you want us to do? Another idea would be, how do we expand our reach in Highland? Yeah, we have all these ministries that we've been doing. 
But maybe there's some other things that we need to be doing. How can we further expand into this neighborhood? How can we explore new opportunities to be a blessing to Highland and in the city? And how can we do all things in Jesus' name? Today is the feast of the holy name of Jesus. And it's a time for us to think about how can we do more? Not in the name of Church of the Highlands or the name of St. Matthias or the name of ourselves, but how can we do more things in the name of Jesus? I love uh, the, one of the songs that we're going to sing and that's going to be sung in just a little bit. Um, it's titled, There's Just Something About That Name. And what I want to invite you to do when you hear that in the Bobby Pulley time, think about it. There is just something about that. Continue with the prayers of the people, form one, which is found on page 383. With all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all clergy and all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nation, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy the city of Shreveport and for the Highlands, for every city and community, and for those who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and wealth to serve us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land and on water, air or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widows and orphans, and for all the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
question. I invite you to speak either in your hearts or uh, out loud the names of people that you would like to lift up in prayer. who have turned themselves over for our prayers and for our concerns, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially we remember Francis, Mother Ellis, all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll take a moment to recombobulate ourselves refocus ourselves on and before we begin the confession on page 360 so if you'll take a moment of silence and just refocus Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. In thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not broken you a couple more. We have not broken our neighbors as ourselves. We are very sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, so that we may know how to live with you and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us, you, in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us greet each other in the name of Christ, the peace of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. And you.
church uh, is very much, uh, where we are very much involved uh, on a weekly basis. We have a uh, chapel time uh, on Tuesdays uh, with the clients in that program, and also uh, Sabre Hicks uh, does some uh, different types of recreation with them uh, during the week as well. So uh, come and hear about it, see where they meet on Texas Street right there by many scene. Um, Across from the new park uh, that is right there, kind of across the ways from uh, Church Holy Cross. Also, um, we do have some birthdays that are here, and, and before that, I think we have another announcement. Uh, Charlene, yes, got one. Uh, two things. Remember after the service to come by and sign some birthday cards that I didn't have out earlier. We have a bunch of people in January. Um, <laughs> Next Saturday, this coming Saturday, January the 7th, Francis is going to host here a community resettlement uh, training. Uh, we want to sponsor Louisiana Aid, the program she works with with the migrants. They want to sponsor a family to come here. This is probably different from the ones that are traveling through here and she's getting them transportation out. But it'll be a family that wants to settle in Shreveport. So it's from 1 to 4, and it'll be somewhere in the building, either downstairs or up here. So we want to have that, okay? All right, thank you. Thanks, Francis. And the Veterans Birthday Party is going to be uh, Tuesday uh, at 5 o'clock. Yeah, and then we're going to be there at 5. Okay. We'll be there at 5 uh, on Tuesday, right down the street at the corner of you have Holmes' uh, uh, last Sunday is today. Uh, not his last Sunday altogether, but his last <laughs> Sunday uh, right here uh, with us in the street court. And so we want to uh, have a special prayer for Bones. I'm going to ask Bones to come up the front. At the same time, I'm going to ask Ethel to come up because she has a birthday on January 6th, is it? That's right. Yeah, okay, come on down. Anybody else have a birthday? Dewana. Oh, Dewana's is on the same Yeah. Yeah. will get you next week. Okay, wrong. All right, well, first, let's have a prayer for uh, and a blessing on uh, Bones. Lord, we give you thanks for Bones and all that he has meant to us and to our community. We regret this weekend, but we wish him joy and peace and an awesome time as he moves to Florida. Let his light shine there as brightly as he has shown here, and let him know that he is always a part of our community, no matter where he goes. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I do not have the birthday blessing on the screen for today, so uh, if you'll look in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 830. 830. And we uh, will want to give thanks to them as we continue uh, through the week. So we're going to do 
prayer 50 on page 830. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Ethel and Catherine, and the one, where's the one? No. It's not tomorrow. Oh. No. <laughs> okay. As they begin another year, grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will have our uh, tithes and offerings. Oh God, we thank you for your goodness and grace. We thank you for the name that you have given us, the name above all names, Jesus Christ. As we receive our tithes and offerings, we pray that you would bless them and multiply them for the good of your kingdom in our world today. Amen. Amen. There's just something about that Oh, 
We continue with post communion prayer on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in this holy ministry that we are the living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To the end, to you and the faithful witness of the Lord, in honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.